Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today, we're gonna head back into Skellige. Skellige has uh, had a few new additions, so two very powerful cards. I'm gonna be taking a look at one of them, and you can see her, I think it's a her, uh, already on the uh, favorite card here, Svalblood, because we're gonna go into Self-Wound with a Bear With Me deck. So Bear With Me is a Self-Wound deck that focuses around Svalblood and just hitting yourself over and over and trying to heal off as much of that damage as possible as well. If you've seen the deck building video uh, from a few days ago, then you'll already recognize this deck because that's the deck that we uh, built right there. If you're interested in the process of me building a deck, you can check out that video uh, as well. It's, the link is in the description of this uh, video, as is, of course, the link to this deck specifically to the Play Gwent website. If you head there, you can check it out, import it into your own game and experiment, it, uh, experiment with it in your own game as well. Uh, don't forget to upvote it on the website as well, because every bit of support is really appreciated. Uh, now, as always, we're going to be going through each and every single card of this deck one by one. If you're not interested in that, you can skip right to the example matches using the timeline down below. Uh, so without further ado, let's check out these cards. So first up, we have Squirrel. Squirrel allows you to banish a card from your opponent's graveyard. Definitely a tech card. Four power for four provisions, but it's very handy to take care of some uh, annoying echo cards or cards that just stick in the graveyard to uh, allow your opponent to play them again, as we will be doing a lot in this deck as well. Next up we have a double armor Drakkar. We're trying to damage ourselves a lot so this card is perfect for that. Four power and two armor for four provisions and at the end of your turn if this card has no armor anymore you gain two armor again. If it loses the armor it boosts itself by one. If your opponent has two damaged units or more you boost yourself by two instead. So very good damage taker that also boosts itself a little bit if it loses that armor. Then we have two Svalblood fanatics. We'll be seeing a lot of these guys. So four power for four provisions and on Berserk too. So if it drops to two health or below, transform into a bear abomination, which is a six power uh, unit with no abilities, but is a beast and a cultist. Then we have another tech card, the Beller, four power for four provisions, and you can purify a unit, either one of your own or your opponents. Then a double hermit. Hermit are hermits are very good at both healing themselves and damaging other units. So seven power for four provisions and on deploy he damages himself by four. So drops to three power. And on berserk six at the end of your turn you damage the unit to the right by one and then heal yourself by two. So as long as he is damaged he will damage the unit to the right by one and then heal himself by two. So he will keep doing this as long as he is damaged at the end of your turn. So you can take advantage of that with some of the other cards in the deck. Then we have this Fallblood Priest, three power for five provisions. At the end of your turn, damage the unit to the right by one and then boost self by two. So basically the same thing as the Hermit, but with no cap and he boosts himself instead of healing. So he will just keep going uh, as long as you get him on the board. So this guy can get pretty big by the end of this. Then we have a double half through Singer for provisions, no, for power for five provisions. And on the ploy, you heal an allied unit by two. The first time you heal an allied unit during your turn, every single turn, you spawn also a deafening siren on this row. So on the ploy, basically uh, eight points and just generates two points per turn as long as you can get a heal off. And of course, to get that heal, we also have a few other cards to do uh, to handle that. So the Tweersack Veteran starts at eight power for five provisions, but immediately damages himself by three. And if he reaches Berserk 3, so 3 power or below, he heals himself fully back to 8. So very, very good card to take some damage. And then for healing, we also have Joanna, 5 power for 6 provisions. On order, you heal an allied unit by 2. Has one charge to start with, but she gains a charge whenever an adjacent unit takes damage. So this can spiral out of control quite quickly. Now next up we have the Heimei Flaminica basically performing a similar role to Joanna. Six power for six provisions and at the end of your turn you heal all other units on this row by one. So if you play her she immediately does that as well um, at the end of the turn so she can definitely uh, generate some good points for you. Sigvald then, probably one of the more powerful cards in the deck. Um, Sigvald is 7 power for 8 provisions and whenever this unit is damaged by other non-status abilities you gain bleeding for the same duration instead. So this card cannot be damaged in any way, shape or form except for bleeding. He also has an order ability where he damages the unit by the duration of bleeding on self. 
and then he purifies himself. So if it was an enemy unit, you damage yourself by that amount as well, which definitely will kill him. So if you kill something with his ability, he will uh, also go down. However, if you damage a uh, an allied unit by that amount, you boost yourself by the amount of bleeding on you. So not only is this card immune to direct damage, he will still lose a point for bleeding every turn, but he can transform all that bleeding that is on him into a powerful boost if you sacrifice one of your own units to do so which we definitely have a couple of options for now to make the damage on sigvald bigger and bigger and bigger we also have not the callus not a seven power for eight provisions and on order he damages an allied unit by half of its current power and then damage an enemy unit by the same amount we have enough units that can take that hit uh, so uh, Nut is always going to be a very powerful card and on Berserk 5 he actually refreshes his ability every single turn. Uh, so if you can keep him alive but below uh, 6 power, so 5 power or below, um, he will continuously have that very powerful ability. Then of course we have a lot of very important cards that we need to keep on the board so Sigdrifa's right is here to get them back if they die. So we summon a Skellige unit from the graveyard to an allied row and give it Doomed. Summoning means that we don't get the deployability, of course, but still everything else goes. So every other passive will still remain. And it, this card does also not have a provision limit, so we can also get Svalblood back with Sigdifa's right. Next up is Saris Fearless, a very, very powerful card that I see very, well, not really played a lot. Four power for 10 provisions, and after you've dealt damage to your own units for nine times, you summon yourself from the deck to the ranged row. So this card automatically tins itself. So be careful not to have her in hand unless that is your um, goal, of course. Uh, she also has an order ability that she can use immediately and refreshes every turn, where she fully heals an allied unit and damages an other allied unit by the amount healed. So with this, you can do some very fancy stuff. So you can heal a very damaged unit and then put all the damage on Sigvald, for example, which is going to be what we're going to be doing if we can. The Malacene is the uh, self damage queen of beasts, so 7 power for 10 provisions on deployed. She gains Veil, so she doesn't keep the Veil if you uh, were to resurrect her. And on order, you spawn Rain on an enemy row for 2 turns and damage herself by 2. At the end of every one of your turns, she also damages the adjacent units by one and gain one, gains one base power for every unit damage, damaged. So this means that this card will keep growing in power as long as you keep her on the board and she has targets to damage. Also meaning that if she goes to the graveyard afterwards, she keeps that power because she will be... Um, her base power is increased so that when she is resurrected she will gain that, those extra points again so if you get her to 12 for example using her ability she will remain 12 in the graveyard and will be 12 when you resurrect her with either uh, both options that we have to resurrect cards if any unit that you damage on top of all of that other ability uh, of those other abilities was a cultist you refresh the order as well so you can spawn rain again next up we have the new Svalblood totem uh, still has resilience so it is a location card which stays on the board for one extra turn on deploy you spawn a Svalblood fanatic on both sides of this card so we've seen that boy as already and on order you damage an allied unit by two and you can do that every single turn this is incredibly powerful in this deck you can damage cards that trigger uh, abilities based on that damage. You can damage cards just to, for example, the, um, the not the cultist, the, um, the hermit. Um, so he triggers his own ability again and heals himself again. There's a lot of options that you can put this damage on. So very powerful card to have on the board. Ideally, you would put this on the board later. So either the uh, second or third turns. Uh, just because of the fact that it's really, really handy to have that option at all times. Then Art is another very undervalued card. 5 power for 11 provisions, and if you're not facing a mirror match, this card is a powerhouse. So on the ploy, you play a 4 provision cultist from your deck. Can either be a uh, Svalblood Fanatic or a Hermit. Uh, and if you put them on the range road, then whenever a unit is played, including the one that you just pulled from your deck, you damage it by half its power. If it's a fanatic, it will immediately transform into a bear abomination, making this an 11 point uh, card on deploy. And of course, if it is a hermit, you will damage him to one power, but he will keep his ability for longer. So it is a trade off that you do there. This ranged ability also functions against your opponent. 
So as long as Artis is on the board on the ranged row, whenever your opponent plays a card, it will immediately da be damaged by half its power, which is uh, very powerful. It's also power, not base power. So if this card was already boosted in hand, for example, in Square Tell, it will uh, definitely damage it by half that total power and not just the base power. Next up, we have the new cards, Fallblood. This uh, bears some explanation. And yes, that was a pun, uh, definitely pun intended. 10 power for 13 provisions and on deploy, you damage all units by one, including your own. So keep that in mind. Whenever a bear abomination enters your side of the battlefield, repeat the deploy ability. You generate one with your leader ability um, and you generate a couple with Svalblad Fanatics as well, uh, of which we have at least four in the deck. Um, but this card generates them as well, because the first time you deal six damage to units each turn, including your own, you spawn a Svalblad Fanatic on this row. So if there are at least six units on the board um, when you play Svalblad, Svalblad included by the way, um, you will generate the Svalblad Fanatic as well. So at the very least, if your opponent has as many units as you have on the board, you get 14 points on deploy, um, but this will probably generate way more points because every time you um, spawn a Bear Abomination, it repeats. So if the Svalblad Fanatic that you spawned are also damaged, he triggers his own ability or she. I still don't know if it's a she or a he. I think it's a she. Lore-wise, um, oh no. Never mind. I should probably read the card because it says he. So Svalblad is a he. <laughs> okay, uh, but a very, very powerful card indeed. And you can replay this with uh, Sigrifas right. The only difference will be that you won't get the deployability, but still. 10 points on the board is nothing to scoff at. And then last but not least, we have Fukusha. Fukusha will not be able to resurrect Svalblad, but can resurrect anything else. So uh, very, very powerful card. 4 power for 14 provisions. And on deploy, you play a Skellige unit from your graveyard with a provision cost of 10 or less. Give it Doomed, and then spawn Rain on the opposite row with a duration equal to the unused provision. So if you spawn Sigvault, you get two turns of Rain as well. Um, it is also playing, so you get deploy abilities if you want them. Then our stratagem is Crystal Skull, so boost by four and give Veil for one of our bronze units that we use at the start. And then our leader ability is of course Ursine Ritual. This is a bear deck, so we damage an allied unit by one for five times. If you've used up all the charges, then you spawn a bear abomination, of course, triggering Svall Blood again. And that's it. Let's uh, head straight into those example matches to show off how powerful this deck can be. And our opponent is playing Firesworn. Okay, so Firesworn is basically an insta win um, because Svall Blood just makes this very easy. <laughs> You just kill everything on the board and you have a lot of other cards to, count to counter that, so it's perfectly fine. I'm gonna keep one of the Hafru Singers here. Um, we don't actually get a tank card. Um, I'm gonna play Sigvault first and Malacene. Yeah, you're gonna do it like that. So Sigvault uh, here. Fire Sworn. We're gonna put Sigvault on uh, Malacene on the right side of Sigvault. Like this. So he gets damaged first. Um, well, the bleeding is checked first and then damage, which is why he didn't lose a point there. Um, so we have one extra turn to um, get this going. So I'm gonna put Rain over there and then the Hafru Singer over here. There we go. So now Sigvald is going to start losing points. So you can already see that our cycle is going to be more um, impressive, as you would say, than our opponent can actually start gaining on. Uh, so now the priest is going to go over here. I'm going to start putting rain on the front row as well. Uh, I won't get a heal here, but that's fine, I think. Um, next up, we're going to be playing Joanna, so she can start healing next turn. Should be just about right. There we go. Another Fallen Knight. So let's put Joanna here. Put some more rain in the back. Um, and then we'll be able to heal Sigvald as well. We're also going to get Sarah, so we definitely have this first round. Ooh. And that got killed. Okay. I'm just trying to see what's going to be best here. I think... I'm gonna heal up Sigvault and Malacene. Malacene is at 14 now, right? Um, and then I'm gonna put Svalblood in there already. Because it's just gonna give me 
Oh, it's going to give me Ceres as well. Which is not something I would really want. He could get nuked. And I don't want to see him nuked. So... The priest over there. Uh, and then some rain over here. I should have done that first because I could have gotten another charge on Joanna. There we go. Now we got Ceres. And then we got the boss. Okay. Uh, that's pretty good. I don't think I need to purify anything. So I'm just going to... Let that go. Um, I mean, it maybe doesn't matter. Um, I can heal up. Wait, I'm first going to do Malacene. She's going to get healed and then smacked onto Sigvald. And then I can heal Sigvald. And I could technically now kill the, um, the Siren as well, but I don't really need to. There we go. A 20-point Malacene for the Resurrection Nated, which is really good. And then we still have Svalblood for the uh, the long rounds. So I think this is going to be fine. Uh, so we don't need to banish anything. Tweersock Veteran is fine. We need some tanky, tanky boys, so I think this is good. Um, Hermit is going to be self-sustaining as well. I'll get rid of the Drakkar. Then we get a Hofru Singer. And then we get a Congregation. And now we should be we should be fine. Uh, we can keep the swarm down with Svalblood. So it's gonna be absolutely fine. And we still have the Heimei Flaminica if we get lucky. Nut is fine as well. And we get Fukusha as well. Okay, so we can get Sigvald back. Um, and maybe even Ceres. And that's two big boys. Okay, um, I'm gonna resurrect Sigvald immediately. The reason for that being uh, is that those two guys can actually just do damage on him. And the rain is going to start ticking down anyway. Um, and I can hit Sigvald with Nut. That is, that was really stupid because that just takes the damage. Uh, I'm going to do Nut next and he can start killing the cut up lackeys. That's good. I don't need him at Berserk 5 just yet. Cyrus Hamilkind. Hamilkind. Hemelfart, Hemelfart. Engelkind Hemelfart. So that is basically, he's the child of an angel and he um, goes to heaven. Engelkind Hemelfart. Interesting. I could heal next, but I'm going to do Svalblood first. Uh, Svalblood over here, so he has enough space to generate fanatics. Boom. And that's, I could trigger it again, just to do, I'm going to trigger it again. Boom! And there goes most of the swarm. So yeah, as I said, Svalblood just hard counters Fire Sworn. It's sad that I need to display this now, but it's it's the, the one thing that is automatically nuked by this uh, by this deck is Swarm. So next up, I'm gonna uh, he heals Svalblood. Uh, Svalblood, Sigvald. I'm gonna heal Sigvald. Then I can do four damage here uh, and here because I want to start getting rid of them um, I can't really get another fanatic out I'm gonna have to wait for that um, but it is a good start there we go and we get some more of that but they don't have enough coins to generate uh, stuff for that so three more damage and get that on to Cyrus so they can resurrect anymore and then we can get the small blood totem which is gonna definitely seal the deal here because uh, we can... Ah, oh, we could trigger that again. There we go. We can get another fanatic on the board, and that's just a loop. You just generate bears, and then just see the magic happen. And then we get that, but the swarm is going to be dead by the time that they can do anything about it. So I'm going to put Ceres on the back here. Uh, she can heal um, and damage. So I'm going to heal uh, Svalblood and hit that on the Sigvald. That's another heal for the Singer. And then we can hit... Um... Ah, let's do this. There and there. And then we can hit on the Svalblood Fanatic technically. And just do the whole thing again. Boom. And there we go, there goes another swarm. So, 
I mean, there's no way that they can win this. Because I just keep killing everything. That one is going to go to generate a, a bit of swarm and then he'll uh, boost them all, but it's not going to be enough. I'm also now going to use Sigvald's ability and then you'll see how far this just spirals out of control. So I can kill the deafening siren and then boost myself and then I can hit Sigvald with half of his health. Remember that. I just hit over there. Um... And then I can heal the uh, biggest damaged boy here. Maybe the Hafru Singer first. And just put that onto Sigvald as well. Sigvald is just a damage sink. Um, and then we could technically damage again to get another like big hidden. But you'll see the uh, the fireworks go off in a minute. Because um, it's, it's just insane what this deck does. So there we go. Another damage sink over there. So now Sigvald is high enough to kill anything that comes on the board that's like slightly bigger. I could have triggered him another time to get rid of the Fallen Knight, but everything is going to be dead regardless. So now, um, ah, they might actually get Kill Nut here with the Swarm. The, what's it called? DS Eroy? The Echo card. Probably the best card to play now. Because you have a significant swarm. And we get Vivaldi Bank instead. Okay. So that's going to be one of the fanatics down. And that's going to kill. Okay. And that actually hits us as well, which is funny. Um, I'm going to put the Tuyasak Veteran down. Uh, I could damage it, but I don't need to damage it. I'm going to heal up. What's the biggest thing that's damaged right now? This thing, I think. Like this and that. So that's going to generate another one of those. And then I'm just going to let the fireworks go off. Um, I'm going to hit that one here. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that is we're going to get it triggered uh, three times now. Boom. Um, and then I could technically trigger it, trigger it again to get immediately rid of everything. Um, like this. There we go. And now the entire swarm is gone for the DS Eri. So that's why they needed to play that DS Eri first. Um, because yeah, there we go. Alrighty, and next up is another Nilfgaard deck. Imprisonment. That could be annoying. We could get locked quite a bit here. Um, we start with Saris in hand. Ah, I don't need her in hand, so I'm gonna get rid of the Fanatic. Get one Resurrection option. We have a couple of damage dealers. Maybe one Damager that needs to go. But then I don't have another one if I need another one, because this... Ah, the Huffer Singer is a Cultist as well. It's fine. Okay, we get double Huffer Singer. Um, let's start out with the Tweersock Veteran. I am gonna Veil this thing. Uh, because it's important enough to do so. Press butterflies to start with, so a 3 point boost on the card that they draw. Put down Malacene immediately. She's just gonna start damaging the uh, the veteran. If we get karate here, that's fine. We play a unit. Okay. Draw a card and place the cards. It's a lot of shuffling around in that deck. Interestingly enough. Uh, let's put the hermit down. He's going to start doing some healing and I can put rain on the back row. And we're going to get back to 7 points with Melusine so that is fine and we can heal her next turn. Hermit as well. I would have used that on the veteran but that might just be me. Um, I'm going to continuously put rain on that and then we can put the Hafru Singer over here. And that's going to kill the Duchess Informant as well, so that's kind of okay. We already got to 9 here, which was really quick. Malacene tends to do that if you don't uh, have any armor there. Do a lot of self-damaging. And there we go. Uh, now, I could keep playing until Malacene has like a very juicy amount of points on her. Because Malacene right now is at 11. I could put it up to 15 by playing one more card. Uh, so I'm going to do that. Um, there we go. So 
So now she's 13. And now she's going to be 15. There we go. Our opponent could of course banish, but I didn't really spend too much to keep that going. I still have like a very juicy amount of uh, cards in my hand now, definitely. So I could get a Fanatic, I can resurrect two cards, I could Purify, I don't need the Hermit, and I could not. I could not. So this is ideal. I'm gonna have to pass, of course. Uh, I could have actually played the this thing, this Fallblood Totem. Also gonna have to see that I use units, uh, maybe even get rid of the Paladin, because the Paladin is just gonna be a Purify. Garrison... It's going to be Spotter. What swarm are they working with here? I might actually have to react to this rather quickly. Two armored Drakkars. That's actually not bad. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the Pelag. This is crazy, but I'm going to get rid of the Pelag. Joanna, no. Fanatic, no. And another Fanatic, okay. I'm going to get locked on Artis, which is fine, I think. We get Operator. And we spawn a spotter. I'm gonna play Artis. He's gonna get locked, but... Uh, there we go. Air Abomination. And there we go. The lock. That was to be expected. Coup de Grasse on Artis. I mean... You just fucked yourself. It, what? <laughs> what? Why would you do that? I mean... I'm set up for this, so I'm... I'm I'm not going to care, so I'm just going to play the two Drakars now. That was a weird flex. Can they lock their own units? An enemy unit, they can't. But they're going to be killing everything that they play. So Bratens is going to take half damage. The Duchess Informant might actually die. Yeah. And then the Spotter is also going to die. Um, it does have armor. I'm going to play this Fall Blood totem now just because of the two fanatics why does this not yeah it doesn't have any armor anymore okay fair enough 15 what the fuck lose all armor and look at the top units in your deck up to that amount and choose one and gain vitality equal if it's a soul bronze soldier to boost self by its power instead okay okay um i need to get rid of the locks i'm gonna put this down then hit this and the next card I'm gonna play is Fall Blood. In the hopes that they try to lock that. That's fine. They can do that all day. They could armor up that uh, spotter. Okay, so it's Fall Blood next. And then this. So that gave us the armor back. Um, and I don't have another way of getting. Well, I do have another way of getting a, a bear abomination, but. And there we get Lock, but it gets destroyed. And that gets another Duchess Informant. And it's another Spotter. Okay, I need to kill that. I could get Svalblood back. Oh boy, this is gonna hurt. He's gonna get damaged. Damaged. It's fine. Ah, oh, he gets Lock there. Okay. That's annoying. Um, could get Ceres back as well, but the benefit is going to be limited. Still have Malacene. Um, Malacene could be good, actually. Uh, Malacene is 10 provisions, right? Yeah, so I can... It's definitely the better option, so I'm going to resurrect Malacene now. Don't worry, it's, it's planned. It's going as planned. God damn it, that is ridiculous. It's ridiculous that it gets that much armor. Uh, I can kill it though now. Or not. <sighs> Crap. I can get rid of the armor though. So that that's, that's going to be enough, right? Yeah, that's going to be enough. Um, so... Hit Malacene. Uh, no. Hit the armored Drakkar for four. And then get rid of the armor. Um, the other ones don't have armor. So I think I'm fine here. I could get rain with Malacene. 
That could be useful. They still have two more turns. So it's fine there. I'm going to get my ability back with um, Nut. If Nut remains... Oh, they get another Spolter there. But I can kill it. I can kill the Spolter. It's not. It's fine. It's fine. Um, I'm going to get Saris back. Because Saris now can heal and kill. So now... Uh, Malacene does... It's going to be 10 damage, right? I'm going to get rid of the, the spotter chest. There we go. I could even just do this, but... Get that a little bit quicker. And that's going to be another spotter, but they won't get the order ability there, so it's fine. And then we get a Fanatic... Um, heal. No, wait. I'm gonna put all damage on Malacene. There we go. Then heal Malacene and hit uh, Fukusha. And then just hit the Spotter. And hit this. There we go. Eat it with your spotter deck. And there we go. I think that nice uh, that last match nicely showed off how uh, flexible this deck can be, especially if you can keep Nut alive. Just try and save your best cards for the last and try to bait them out with cards that are not that useful. Like in the previous matchup, Svalblood was less useful because our opponent had a lot of armor. Uh, we had a lot more value in Nut who could keep killing stuff, and in Ceres, who could keep healing the very massive Malacene at the end. Uh, so you have a lot of tools, you just need to be careful that you don't spend them all at once. Um, you have two ways of getting tools back, so Fukusha and Sigrifa's right, so don't forget about that. And the healing can definitely come from these ladies as well, but again, if you're not convinced by these two, uh, we haven't seen them in play a lot here, uh, but they can be very useful. You can also toss both of them, uh, I really like to go then with either Viltkarl or, which is also an option, uh, Blue Boy Lugos, which uh, damages enemy units by two every time he takes damage. Uh, could be very useful as well, uh, but Viltkarl I think just matches uh, a lot better. And then of course another 5 provision card, like for example Delirium or something else. Yeah! That's about it. So with that, that uh, leaves me with only a couple of things to say. Again, if you want to check out the deck itself, you can check the link in the description to the Play Gwent website where you can upload it as well. So please do that uh, and check out the deck for yourself. If you have any questions about this deck or any uh, ways to improve it, let me know as well. So we can uh, discuss that further in the comment section because uh, that's what we're here for after all, trying to help each other out. Um, and last but not least, I'd like to give you all my very best wishes for uh, 2023 and a very happy holiday. So I'd like to see you all in the next video or stream. And uh, well, thank you enormously for watching. Goodbye and stay nutty.